Welcome back, everyone. We got a little bit of time to waste before we get into the next match. And, Kangas, the last so two weeks ago, you got to draw for us a little bit. And I have to I say, did. drawings were something. Beatdowns were worse. So we are going to... Okay, okay. But a drawing is only as bad as the prompt given. Okay? I just want to s specify that real quick. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. I am... Putting this in my in my notebook for later. I'm gonna remember this. <laughs> oh no! But we're just gonna do a little game of me poorly drawing out some scenes of the match that we just got to see, and you two trying to guess what it is. And if you guess it right, you get a point over the other person. All right? Okay. Easy. Let's okay. do it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. And I kind of regret opening this up by talking about how bad Kangas was at drawing because now I've just set myself up for a world of failure yeah, so now expectate you you've raised the bar basically i've yeah, seen your drawing was... sierra it's good all right bring that confidence into the rest of the segment you got it yeah all right well we'll figure this out and to clarify these are going to be from specific points that happened within the match so oh okay i'll give i'll give hints as necessary okay. all right we'll get some some colors in here oh all right all right all right just kidding you got a circle I misclicked. Oh, this isn't really the right color, but it's... Uh, Among Us. Nope, okay. <laughs> um, It's the Herald? It's a, a, the... The, uh... A, a Lowey Ultimate at the Baron fight. This is gonna be earlier in the match. Yeah, no, we aren't starting with that. It's gonna come up later, Kangas. Oh, yeah, um, that's definitely gonna be one. Oh, this is FlyFam getting Herald while Wildcard took all the bot points. They forced them off. V, is a, v, is a, VC. No, that's it. That's it. That's a W. Oh, oh, wild card. Yeah, no. Okay, so wild card tried to fight Flyfam, and they lost the two v three at Herald, right? Yeah, when wild yeah. card was going in yeah. for the fight when they yeah, maybe shouldn't have. Okay, and we then got there. It didn't end up managing to get the fight. So I, you know, Sierra is a good drawer. Or a follow up to that. that was, uh, I, think, I think he just uh, glitched out for a second. I, I thought that was me at first. I'm happy that. Oh no, we lost Cubby completely. Um, All right. Um, well, hey, that that means that it, he just complimented you. That's that's a positive way to close out right there. You're a great drawer, Sierra. Sierra's pretty good at drawing the productions. Like enough of this. Get this man out of here. We're not having any. Hey, going. My day's going great. Oh, I'm big now. Cool. Um, hey, honestly, uh, I think I think I'm ready for this era. Uh, I, I feel like there's a lot of animosity between us because we, we 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 like to trash each other's drawings, but this is an opportunity for us to make that up, and then for me to solo guess. But as I said, I think Cubby's actually back, so I won't get an opportunity. Yeah, to I guess I guess Spectrum diffed. All right, keep going. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I wanted to make this a fair fight. All right, so it Cubby continues. Has, Cubby has one point. We're gonna go on to our next. I gotta find the paper spun. All right. I didn't know we were competing, Cubby. I said that at the beginning. Be a better listener, Kangas. Right, it might it might help you. It, again, then. Being a better listener might help you on Valentine's Day. You know what? That's a good point. Okay. Oh, uh, boys, Akali fights in the mid game around Dragon. But there's one specific that you're looking at, right? Yeah. It's the one where he goes golden. Uh, the lens lands the arrow. He goes in, gets some damage down. That's Moose was tries it tries to flank around and he goes golden? Was it the fight where I said he should have flash ulted on the three and then burn flash later? <laughs> no, it was the it was the double kill and he went for the triple and a uh, oh, no no that was the wrong one. Oh, I screwed it up. But no, it's, oh. the, it's, the, it's the double kill. I just ruined one of my own problems. We're gonna ignore this part. Yeah, no, no. I this think that's the one that I was saying though. Which yeah, one? Lens Lens gets hit by Instinct's arrow. And then uh, Blaze goes in, lands all the damage, and Blaze, then Moose right. Hater tries to flank around on the Alawi, doesn't get anything done, and then uh, Blaze goes golden with a stopwatch right before dying. I, that I, was a double I, I think, kill. I think he's right. I think he's right. I had it written down as prompt as, you know, Blaze probably double kill, but yes. <laughs> 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 you know, you're... You know, you're a good storyteller. I'm drawing this, and you have, like, a paragraph ready was good to call go. It. Like... You yeah, had the, you know, like the green, you had the shrukins and everything, you know? I got the, 
You know, it's Strad. All right. Mm -hmm. If you were listening carefully, uh, there was a huge hint that I already gave away for uh -oh. the next one. So that's going to make well, this I'm already one out. a little easier. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't listen to me. All right. going to... Hey, it's a smiley face. It is a smiley face. Misfortune. Yes. Yeah, as we're MF cleansed early, caught the arrow and died. This is gonna. I was be... gonna say the MF flank play, where MF goes around uh, and then throws out the uh, make it rain. It's pretty late into the game. We're getting that was pretty late. Later into the game. Oh, oh, flashing the wall, flashing the wall and getting all the damage down and then double up in to get the execute and the extra damage Damn and then the double kill almost got a triple kill. Yes, that was it. And I, I mistook where the triple kill happened because they're, they're trying to get that triple kill. So that was the hint that I accidentally uh, gave in the last one. That was an yeah. action pack game. I forgot. That play was Sorry. so good. Was like so honestly, good. Lens stepping nice. up there. Uh, first off, got all the bullet storm damage down to chunk out the health bars and then repositioned and uh, had the killer instinct to go in. That was really cool because he even like waited. It, during the replay, I noticed he like walks to the wall, waits for everyone to walk further forward and then flashes over once they can't really escape anymore. So Yeah, was there really is cool. like that solid like second or two before actually yep. actually going for the flash. So it was pretty, it was pretty good. All right, next one. I don't know if I can draw this, or frankly, if I should be drawing this. Um... <laughs> oh, oh, it's the tentacles. It's Alawi. It, it's Moose Hater getting all the kills with the tentacles at the Baron Pit. Yeah, it, you don't have to draw it. It's okay. <laughs> Honestly, I probably just saved Emily some stern words at some point. <laughs> I, be, I just, I just used the point like that. There wasn't I even did. a hint. I, I, I was the, waiting. That to was guess. The, the, the that hint was, the was hint. I don't know if I'm allowed to be drawing this on broadcast. Um. How, do you do you have a, a PNG of Joshi's face? Can we just put that in the middle with like a bunch you know of tentacles slap it or something? I I should work on my listening skills before Valentine's Day. Uh, that's all I'll say. <laughs> you and me both, Cubby. We'll we'll do it together. All yeah. right. I gotta okay, oh, no more ooh. hints allowed because honestly, you're roasting through these and I only have one more prepared prompt about the game, so It was the one MF flank. No, <laughs> My turn. Ew. <gasps> oh, it's no, hard. Okay, that was that, that. That's what I thought it was gonna be too. All right, I honestly already like s screwed. I really stuff. hope it was, and now she has to just make up one on the fly so that it's not actually that. This is the dragon fight where Saligo had the big emperor's divide to save lens. The last dragon fight where they got soul. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Last fight, so yeah. Oh. Kudos. Easy peasy. Sweet. Yeah, we didn't get very I liked, far in that one. I, mean, I, I like the flanking I was going to let her draw out a little bit more because she said that that was the last one. Planned. No, you know, so you know what? Time. What was better today? Was it the 15-minute flanking Syndra in between the two mid lane turrets? Ooh. Or was it the 30-minute flanking MF Ooh. to drop the three-man ultimate to win the game? I so think, good. I think the MF because that's an 80 carry going rogue. That's an 80 going carry rogue. Like. <laughs> I'm not going to stand behind the tanks. I'm going in. Syndra, it's like, at least she's got CC. So if anybody dies here, she can just scatter them away. But like, if eh, man, that, that's just Giga Chad right there to actually go for that kind of play because you have no Giga defense. Chad. All right. So I have one last one real quick. Okay. Oh, oh. oh, let's go. Is it Steve shaving his beard? Is it you on the desk with me and Cubby? <laughs> 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 no, but you guys are going in the right direction. Okay. Um, somebody has hair. It's it's me being bald. It's just that, that's just it. <laughs> no, but you are wow. also bald. <laughs> oh no! Right. Oh oh, the competition has driven us apart. I uh, that's what Sierra feels right now. <sighs> Here, let's get let's get the close up. You can zoom in right there. See see that shine. <laughs> He's pretty oh, yeah. bald. It, this is, uh, you know, earlier newly duo game where it was, you found out that you don't actually love or care for Cubby. You know nothing about him. <laughs> Couldn't even, like, any, any of them. I, so. You weren't supposed to tell him that, Sierra. That was, that was just between us. Well, Sierra. He, he knew. I'm sure he knew. How could you not tell during the Sierra, podcast? in many relationships, you know, there is someone who settles and someone who chases. And I'm going to <laughs> confirm later that I am the one who is chasing Kangas when I get all the answers right.
That's all I'm gonna say. Uh, look forward to that for the next best two. Oh no. Well, it's time to let you guys go chase a draft. I feel like there was a way better joke that could have been done for that, but hey, not time for game it. two. So let's get some League of Legends. <laughs> Thank you, Sierra. Uh, Sierra's gonna have to go take like a twenty-minute walk after that segment. Like, I'm so tired of this BS. You know what? You know what, Cubby? You know what, Cubby? Yeah. I'll do better. Okay, I can change. You can fix wow. me. Oh, and, that's uh, dangerous. That's dangerous. We're, we're we're gonna come out the other side of this in a better spot than we entered. How about that? Um. Okay. I, I let's let's do this. Let's 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 try it out this game. Same same advice I'd give Flyfam, actually. They were they were close, Cubby. And again, good transition. We, we talk about well Wildcard done, as the team that will win the late game fight, and Flyfam unfortunately have the reputation now of there's always a moment around the 25 to 35 minute mark where something happens that just yanks the game away from them out of their clutches. They had a lot of cool moments there, so I it's crazy like how excited I am for this team despite the fact that they're one in fourteen because they really don't play like a team that's one in fourteen. I'm looking forward to Fly Fan picking up a couple more wins. It's gonna happen before the before the season ends. Uh but yes. we will see if it happens today. I will say one way the Fly Fan could switch things up if they want to grab a Malachi here instead of a Sejuani. Uh I will say on the side of Wildcard, uh Kiel has yet to play the Sejuani. Uh so there there is a real lack of priority on that champion for them. Uh Malachi is tied now for his most played, so uh, that could be one change the Flyfam can make going into this one. I will say I still liked Swords of Ash, and I think that if they've... Oh! oh, They just first picked the Sejuani. Okay. Leaving up the Maokai for Keel and not going for the Ash this time around. Interesting. So so this, to me, the, the big pivot here is that they're going to try something different in the bot lane. They want to see what wild card goes for first, because maybe they have a counter. I think they want to grab Silas here, and they... Try to like uh, one, two, three topside. So we could easily see like Renekton and Silas and try and see them play out the game from there. I want to see Silas. Malachi Ash is enough to see Silas. I'm down for boys to take it now. And double melee plus the Sejuani means that you're able to proc the passive and start synergizing with Maniac there. It could be the strategy. Or they're going to go away from the ranged bot lane support you here. Lulu? If they go for Zeri Lulu, yeah. I still am advocating for Silas. I see two alts I really like, and I have a Sejuani. And, okay, that's going to be Lulu. All right, so that, that's the one change that we have so far. Uh, we will see if that Ash will be in the hands of Lens or DK. I will say it has only been Lens so far. And their answer to this, it, it has historically been uh, Zyra with Blitzcrank oh. off the table. So do we see the Zyra here for wildcard? I would like that. Just go for it right away. You can ban away. The Silas then in the next round of bans here, and then at least get one of your solo laners to counter pick. But okay. okay, not the Zyra, they're going back to the Senna. Still similar thought process where they're leaving their solo laners till the last. It puts a little bit more focus on the lane. Uh as Senna, you know, you can sustain your Ash, and she does have a pretty strong couple first couple levels. It's good into Lulu. Uh, and Senna's a little bit safer at other stages of the game as well. So again, this is a DK special. Uh it will be another game on the Senna for him. And I, already for wildcard, like the slows they have and the area effect abilities, it's going to be so tough for Flyfam to get up in the face of them. And, and again, wildcard, they draft for how their champs interact with the enemy team at the later stages of the game. So already Flyfam, they have a lot of threats to overcome. And I will say I'm, I'm quite surprised that they haven't taken the Silas off the board, given that Maokai plus Ashalt are two ways that Flyfam could break the threats or I, I should say find a, a sound engage against all the tools that wildcard have i can understand and respect though the cassid and ban because wildcard like yeah, you just absolutely. said they draft for the late game and oftentimes their games can get to that point so getting the cassid and scaling off the table still makes a certain amount of sense yeah My fan focus on the mid lane saligo's champ pool i mean it tells me that they actually want to take a mid laner here and let moose hater have counter picks so uh, will be Oriana. Uh, this is Saligo's most played. I've been on the Oriana train as I think she interacts really well with a lot of the junglers and also that ball, the zone control now for Zeri. It's always a threat. You can also throw the ball on Malachi and he can twist it advanced in for free. It's a big shockwave and yep. combo really, really nicely with Malachi plus Ash. Uh, so I like this pick and with some of the changes they made for Ori, a little bit more powerful ultimates and also flattened out uh, her power curve for the waning phase. Uh, so she gets uh, magic damage every level down instead of just the uh, level thresholds. Really does help Ori. Uh, I don't think she needed the buffs, but she has them. More players are playing her now. So uh, good to see. 
But you are accurate in the Silas prediction. FlyFam yep. want that for Blaze. And then the blind pick Camille for Lunasia. I know that uh, before going in, we took a look at the Wukong game where he got three solo kills on Philip, but he also played Camille Just, in that up. series and did very well. He is oh. for this pick, but this is a pretty big counter. Okay, so the poppy means that Camille is going to have trouble engaging on the back line. I will say Camille does bring a nice bit of team fight and engage. Again, you have to get around the Maokai Ash, so I don't mind the pick from Nanasia, especially given that Camille's two counters and Renekton and Jax are off the board. Uh, but Moose Hater debuting another champ. Going to be interesting. It is a very tanky top side. This is another champ that Zeri could scale off of uh, for instinct. Mm -hmm. I want to just go back to what you said. Wildcard draft for how their champs interact with their opponents. I love this Poppy for that reason. You block the Camille engage. Silas and Sejuani as well. Like all three of those champions are trying to jump dash in. If you have that said fast presence, you can actually buy a lot of space or your Orianna, your Ash, your Senna to work with. And uh, the Maokai on top of that. So I, they keep doing it, Covey. Wild cards just keep, even if it's like not the craziest, most hype top laner, yeah. it's still exciting nonetheless, just because of their unique approach to draft. I, I also do want to see if Soligo can win this lane matchup against Silas, uh, because I, I think that Ori uh, has an advantage and there are a few interactions that I'll, I'll be looking out for and talking about in the game. See if Soligo yeah. can play it out well, as he is, has been one of our big Ori players here. Uh, yeah. It's been a big part of wildcard success. And this was the blind pick. So if you win the blind pick, uh, it feels pretty good. Obviously, FlyFam's still wanting the Silas in mid lane for Blaze because of all the ultimates you can steal. Um, something to just keep our eyes on if Blaze is also prepared to maybe have a rougher laning phase just for that strong pick afterwards. Yeah, and I, I mean, FlyFam, again, they, they have angles to actually, you know, get in this game and win. Uh, that Camille Sejuani plus the Silas is good. You can't attack the, the side lanes. I think that Camille should be able to go even with the Poppy. It's more of a neutralizing pick for Moose Hater. So we'll see if Lunasi is up for that. And uh, we'll see if Wildcard are up to answering whatever FlyQuest has prepped for the early game. Because they are trying to get this lane prio. Lens hanging around to spot if anyone's there. Maniac will see Lens and Wildcard they know the plan. They know what's up. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, oh. Stop to back. That sword. First blood. I don't know if it's quite as impactful as that, but you know, I like where your head's at. Well, wild card will answer with the Raptor Ward. So trying to track where Maniac's at. Uh, and I, again, we'll see if Maniac does work towards that top side. I feel like wild card, their bot lane's winning uh, in isolation, but of course, Senna plus Ash, very squishy champions. Uh, but Maniac wanting to work towards the solo laner is not surprised. I would love to see him cross through mid, try and get some tools out of Saligo. Because again, Ori does have a very positive matchup into the Silas. Uh, can use the ball in the wave to control Silas. And also, uh, Oriana's W. You can buy space, uh, slow down Silas, and try and use that extra move speed to dodge out in the second part of Abscond the Duck. So this is a pretty good matchup for Ori if you're able to use those tools correctly. We really want to see if Saligo uh, can demonstrate that. It's, he has been having quite a nice resurgence this split in NACL. Yeah, really coming back here on a provisional team. You mentioned Maniac pathing topside. I actually kind of like the opposite plan. Maybe look to bot side. If you can go for a pretty cheesy gank, we saw Rose Thorn do that last week to great mm -hmm. success on the Sejuani. And Ash Senna will try and poke out the Zeri Lulu early on, try and get shoved. So, might be putting themselves in position for that gank. And then you also avoid that ward around the Raptors. But nope, as I say it, Maniac is pathing up towards the Raptors. So, it looks like full clear bot side into the top lane gank. And surprisingly enough, Kiel's actually playing to match. I, I do feel like this favors wild card. They have the range and the sustain advantage. Uh, and so, I think no jungle interaction for the bot lane is very good for wild card. Um, we will see if Duo King can make the most of it. Okay, damage traded back and forth. Important to note that Maniac was spotted on the Raptors, so Keel should know where Maniac is. Maniac will have to mm -hmm. guess where Keel is. Um, but, I mean, it wouldn't be too surprising to know based on how the bot lane is playing. But Maniac here actually we go. Has mid lane. Love this. Gank here. Play setting it up onto Saligo. Saligo has Flash. Should be able to get out relatively here. fine. Can Flash. Oh, Maniac looked for the Flash Arctic Assault onto Saligo. He was trying to save Flash for as long as possible. That was unwise. The bot Yo. lane will catch up. Blaze will be traded. But now it's a 3v3. Flyfam, they're here and they have a lot of damage coming in from Instinct. Not enough, it would appear, as it's just a one-for-one -one trade. 
it still isn't that bad though for Sligo because he can actually walk back to lane whereas TP was burned from Blaze and he has the flash up so we answer evenly and the next time Sejuani comes mid Sligo does have a tool to get out uh, so I, I still feel like the advantage here is for the Orianna uh, even despite the play as we take another look here oh Maniac was so close that Arctic Assault landed, you definitely get Saligo's Flash over the Dragon Pit wall, but he thinks that he can get into range of Duo King's heal plus the Senna innate heal. Yeah. And Sword actually even flashed a heal to two to try and save Blaze there, so a lot of summoner spells used by Flyfam. And again, bot lane in isolation, I feel like it really does favor uh, Lens and Duo King. They have the poke, they have the sustain, so if they can just keep on uh, buying time and keeping... Uh, that way, isolated from the rest of the map, they should win the War of Attrition. Heal hanging out around Moose Hater top side. Meanwhile, hoping to oh. shove this wave in. He gets the jungle love. Yeah. I mean, it's Moose Hater. Okay, but he, it might not be enough. As Lunasia, the Ignite what? sticking down. Wait, Moose Hater walks back in to Bukwer? try and him. We can buck where minion. Oh, the last tick of Ignite was enough. And there's nothing in range to throw the buckler at to then grab the shield afterwards. So Lunasia gets a very clean solo kill. Yeah, I think he was trying to get... Oh, oh okay. Oh. And Instinct just takes on Duo King. Sure, why not? Okay. Uh, some mistakes being okay, made here as... Oh, boys. This could be a good bait. We wow. We played too hard there as he kind of sidestepped back out. If you just commit to the brush, I think Soligo maybe goes in. But also, there's a wave, so... No action mid, but hey, the top and the bot side, FlyFam picking up kills on both halves. Kind I mean, Moose Hater, yeah, Moose Hater kind of asleep at the wheel, uh, letting Camille, you know, connect with uh, the E when you are the Poppy. And also the Buckler, I think he was waiting for it to come up. If you throw it in the minion, the minion dies. You do get the shield instantly back. You don't have to go find it. Uh, but a little bit late. Didn't get the grass proc either. Could have healed him a little bit from the Ignite. And that's a big kill going over to Lunasia. As again, I, I feel like Poppy is a neutralizer for Camille. It doesn't mean that this matchup is 100% lost uh, if, if you are the Camille. So we'll see if Lunasia can maybe use this advantage. And again, he has Sejuani in his back pocket to try and attack the Poppy and get ahead. Uh, uh, Camille that's ahead is very scary. Yeah, also... Ooh, okay, there we go. There's the set There it is. Also had the Hexic Ultimatum, so... I was going to say Lunasia has a short window here before Moose Hater hits level 6, where maybe you go for the all-in mm -hmm. again, but... At this point, looking unlikely, Musator just got the ultimate. Duo King, meanwhile, still level 3 as a support right now. Dying in lane, definitely putting him behind. Maniac and Sword hunting here. Oh, heal will spot them out. Dude, Maokai's just so safe. He just throws saplings anywhere that you don't have vision, and it is so hard to catch him. Important, though, the Fly Fam got ahead, because uh, as you stated, you know, Maokai's safety, especially paired up with an Ash as well. Uh... That is something that will give Wildcard a lot of information in this game. And we'll see if FlyFam... Again, this is a team. It's not like they haven't gotten early leads. It's just sometimes they... It's a young team that hasn't been able to convert all of them into wins. Mm -hmm. Wildcard, again, a, a team that, you know, they do play for the later stages of the game. You can punish early. I, I really want to see if uh, maybe FlyFam can push the pace. I want to see if they can fight around uh, Herald at, at first. I feel like that's the first part of the game where I'm going to really look to see if FlyFam can take their small lead and turn it into a big advantage. Now they're not fighting for the dragon, as Wildcard will get this one for free. They'll lose the shove bot lane, I suppose. So not nothing's totally free. Okay. Oh, oh, oh he's dead. Instant stun. Wait. Actually, Moose Hater with a clean combo. Not enough. Lunasia on the Camille will get a second solo kill. Real big for Lunasia again. The Camille when he picked it, uh, like the two biggest counters are gone, and Moose Hater with this unique pick in the Poppy. You can neutralize it, but if you aren't throwing up the steadfast presence when the hook shot comes, you're gonna die. That's happened twice now as Lunasia gets the solo kill without even burning ignite, and that item advantage gonna start adding up against Moose Hater. And Lunasia did not have ignite. It just came off yeah. cooldown as he completed the back, so it's not gonna get easier for Moose Hater, who can't teleport into the lane. The wave's shoving in. This is disaster for a top laner. And again, if you don't steadfast presence the hook shot, you lose out a big advantage. Uh, that might have been the difference uh, in this kill going Moose Hater's way. It, it was that close, but Lunasia goes for it, finds it. Second kill in his pockets. We've been singing his praises. Again, as a very young uh, young okay, player that we didn't is, know a lot about. Is, and now he's got some copy pastas. I gotta read pastas. this. I gotta read this. Okay. Lunasia's a cheetah, gonna give you amnesia. He giving you that subpoena, making tacos with some pap paprika? Paprika on your tacos. I feel like there was a better food choice for Defeating you in the arena, I'm not going to finish all of it. But still, you get the idea. 
Lunasia is popping off right now. No end in sight. And this is a player, like, this team is 1 in 14. Guys, Lunasia, coming into the day, he was tied for fourth in the, or fifth in the league in solo kills. That, that, that's a big deal for a, a team that's really, you know, kind of struggled this season. I, I think it says a lot about how well Lunasia has played, and it's good to see him step up uh, in this matchup against Moose Hater. And Sword flashing the Enchanted Crystal Arrow. Keel is still around. They really want to commit to this dive. Sword will not be level six, but the Herald's picked up topside. Maybe Flyfam can make this worth the time. Instinct actually going to absorb the first hit. That's Teleport a good TP. Defensively coming in from Blaze. Yeah, no dive for like Wild that. Card. And Flyfam, they get the Herald. They just have to use Blaze's Teleport defensively to earn it. Uh, it really isn't the worst thing in the world, though. I mean, Blaze could walk back mid right now to pick up that wave, but instead he's going to reset. Just be down to TP. But losing that wave for the Silas, it would have been a very successful dive on the side of Wild Card. So I feel like that uh, sacrifice is definitely the lesser of two evils. Uh, losing boys is teleport like that. So not 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 at all bad here by the side of YFAM. He is falling behind himself, but hopefully we'll get repaid that later on. If not through his own turret place in the mid lane, maybe Lunasia getting further fed at top side. I'm looking to where K Maniac can go with this Herald. Mm -hmm. Pathing up top. I love investing gold in the Camille, who's already winning the matchup. I think that makes a lot of sense. Ooh, Moosehater with a very good steadfast presence there, but I don't even know if it's enough. The Hexite like Gold made him here. Ah, oh, Lunasia doesn't want to use it. Had the Ignite, I thought maybe you go for it. You're probably just waiting. You have help coming anyway. I right, Kiel's just here on the hover, trying to make sure that this wave gets in for Moose Hater. Uh, I think a smart move from Kiel again. This Moose Hater is behind in this lane, trying to stem the bleeding a little bit in the top side. He can get himself a crab in the process, which will be A-OK. -okay. Uh, so Wallenth Card again, trying to recover on the map. And a 1k gold deficit for them. Not terrible. I am concerned about Camille in the later stages because uh, if you get in the back line, there are a lot of squishies that you can pop. Mm -hmm. But uh, the team fight for Wildcard has been, you know, where they've made the majority of, of their wins. And we, we they've proven they can team fight from behind. Again, this is a team that they don't draft to win lane. They draft to see how their champions interact in the fights. And it's really been a big story for me. Uh, not only the fact they're winning, but how they play Ooh. in these wins is Duo King. Instinct cleanses the Enchanted Crystal Arrow. Wild Growth is still available for Swords, so I think they're trying to bait to see if Wild Card want to go in for anything more. Nature's Grasp. Uh, and Kiel will catch out Lunasia, who is a little greedy. Nice. Shoved in one more wave without any shove help from his jungler. Yeah. That means that Kiel can punish. Wasn't able to Hextech ultimate him, the Malachi ultimate. That, that is the one way he could have gotten it out. Malachi can play correct though and cancel the hookshot cast. Uh, so I, I think uh, holding on to everything there, not terrible from Lunasia, but will be wild card f uh, making this gold graph a little bit more even. And dragon spawning soon. We'll see if wild card can stack their second one, but Maniac, bot lane's low. Has the Arctic prison, or glacial prison, plus the advance. Double knock up on the nice. Duel King lens, flash out of both. I like that play though from FlyFam because now like if they're able to get this wave in, they could think about taking the dragon here. There is still no alt on Keel, so Liga would be a concern. But if Blaze can keep him in the lane, this would be a good take from FlyFam. Stop the stacking a wild card. We'll see if wild card wants to contest. Stopping the stack nice. earlier than we saw in game number one, but Keel is still nearby. Instinct slow. Saligo is coming by as well. Yeah, look out for Saligo. So it could be the big difference maker in this is Keel. We're getting frisky. Oh, it's stolen! Oh, they got him! And the snipe from Duo King! No. Heal will trade his life for it, but that Saligo. was absolutely nasty. Blaze has flash available. He'll probably have to use it to get away. Moose Hater and Lunasia and another 1v1! Oh. Lunasia again taking it! But the action around the dragon goes wild cards away. What a crazy series of events. What the hell just happened is across the map, it's wild card. They took the dragon. That's really big for them to continue the stack as this bot lane in draft taking the Senna. It is a point of power. Uh, but then on the top side, I felt like Moose Hater had that 1v1, but he broke vision in the brush that Lunasi did. And that was just enough to make sure that he got out with the solo kill, his third one of the game. Ooh, and Maniac just goes right in. Instinct also oh. got taken kind of low there. And the snipe 
from Duo King. So well placed. Blaze has flash and still goes down to the final oh. auto of Saligo. So well done from Saligo in that fight. Again, the auto attacks on Orianna. They can do a lot of damage, and Saligo yep. played that really, really well. Uh, Ori is a pick that I expect all of our mid laners to be able to play in NACL, and definitely one that I feel like really rose in priority in the B patch. But Saligo's so playing it in the A patch. They were playing these knockup comps to try and take down Zeri. So to see the Orianna again here. Oh, we get a second replay. Let's see. This was so close. Oh, uh, we didn't take the shield before we went in. Moose Hater felt like he didn't need it. Uh, and that was barely not enough. Again, Lunasia breaks vision. Oh, he actually alts over the Q. Yep. Breaks vision. Musader does drop the orb, but he has a hook shot up. Really, really well done by Lunasia. Pots running too. Love to see that. And yeah, I feel like that deserves a happy BU out for sure. I wonder how low Lunasia actually got. That was definitely single digits. But I don't know exactly how low. Either way. I guess five. Five HP. I think that's a pretty safe. I think a fiver. Ooh. Got a gang coming bot side again. Duo King Lens actually sends it out. Back up very early. Oh, Lunasia. Okay, is this going to be another one? Uh, how many times are you going to have to do this to Moose Hater? Like, <laughs> at this point, it's getting kind of ridiculous. Well, I mean, Moose Hater didn't care in the last game. We'll see if he cares in this one. Uh, is that allow Moose Hater's uh, conspiring to get Lunasia uh, to beat MNS's solo kill record right now. Well, MNS is at 23, so... Ooh, that's, uh, okay, that's a RT, lot. our players have a long way to go. Uh, for reference, the next highest coming into the day was Bradley at 14. So, wow. nine's a lot. <laughs> If you have nine solo kills, you're currently in the top 10. <laughs> Put that in perspective. Hey, all right, Lunasia, you know the you know the target. <laughs> Can you hit it now? As the Herald is started up here by FlyFam, bot side focusing on the turret because Sword leaving lane to go back up if there's a fight at the Herald. Wildcard, even when they give up Herald, they still feel like they're trading up because, I mean, Herald is potentially a turret, but a, or it's a turret, so. Wildcard do cash in. I still think that Wildcard, again, they've swung the gold lead back in their favor. I, I think all eyes as we shift into the later stage of the game, it has to be on Camille. Uh, Camille can break the squishy backline of Wildcard if you are able to get around the Moose Hater Poppy, and Lunasia has been having a really good start to the game. So, so lane focus for Fly Fam for me when it comes to what I look at. It's going to be all about, you know, can Instinct, uh, or can the solo lanes really by the time and playmake to get instinct the time to auto and put out the damage the Sari needs. Whereas for wildcard, Maya is honestly still on Sligo. I feel like Ori is really, really strong in this comp that's very melee heavy. Uh, and you can use the ball to zone out the Zeri. So I really want to see if Sligo can continue to demonstrate this really strong Oriana play we've seen out of him. Who's hater? Rogue charge to the Q. Does a lot of damage to Lunasia. Actually playing these trades pretty well. Has some armor plus the Divine Sunderer mm -hmm. up. So... I don't think it's ever going to be free for Lunasia to still win this sideline. Like, he's working for it, and it's close every time. I don't know, man. You still get, like, a Cho'Gath Q uh, whenever you have the yep, second okay. cast Q on the there Camille. So that, that that's a bit of a problem. As Moose Hater trying to run for the hills a little bit here in the back half. Now both top laners will back off. Duo King and Lens got... Uh, lane so. swapped into the mid lane. Ooh, look at all. Oh, yeah. That's satisfying right there. Ooh. Three Senna stacks through one Q. Actually, not going for a supportive Senna build. This yeah, time it's around. the Bork Duel build. King. Yeah, going for more damage. Yeah, he likes this one against frontliners, too. Uh, if you can buy some space, I, I do think it's okay. It, you can get a lot of damage down, but uh, I think I'm pointing out there are no Radiant Virtues available for Wildcard. FlyFam have one. They're dropping the second Herald on time with the Dragon, so they're going to use this for mid-pressure and then rotate down. We'll see if they can win the fight. Moose Hater is a little bit late, but Lunasia is showing on the bot wave, so Wildcard will have more members here. They decide the fight now. You can get a traditional front to back. Ooh, Sword flashes early. That's Cleanse out of oh, Instinct. Boy. Double Maokai ults going out there. Blaze and Maniac seem to be winning. There's not the fight, but Moose Hater catches Maniac. It's Isolated split. from the rest of the team. The Glacial Prison goes wide, yeah. Wild Growth is in, but it is not enough to save Maniac, and Wild Card yet again will win the team fight. And you know, for me with FlyFam, they're just too early. Like, Lunasia has the gold, he was fixing bot lane. And then when he goes in, you know, Duo King throws out the root, Lunasia has to sidestep, but he can't get in the back line. He will clean up a turret, but 
That's not Flyfan playing to what their team fight wants to be. If they're going to play through bot, you got to let Lunasia fix that wave. Then go hide in fog and try and find an angle. Them forcing it when he's not there, that's all your gold missing. And you have no hopes of winning a fight against wild cards. So I, I like the play from Musator, right? Realize that Lunasia wasn't involved. He pulls the trigger, gets the free kill. And the fact that, again, Flyfan were kind of split. We saw Maniac and Blaze caught away on the wrong yep. side of that wall. Yep. And Instinct Sword, they were getting engaged on. There was the Ori Ball that Sword flashed immediately. Sully Go didn't even use the ultimate, but just in case it was there, then Instinct has to cleanse away from the Ash Arrow. So, like, the, the Zeri-Lulu combo was a little distracted, and now as we come back to live here, Wild Carter back onto the map. They're resetting. They're trying to look for another outer turret here. They already took the bottom one. Mid and top are available. And they're also sacking these dragons, so they're just in a really comfortable spot for Wild Card. And again, look, with Fly Fan, like it feels like this team's close. And I know that this team is, you know, they had to swap out junglers this past week. That's really tough. Uh, we feel like Maniac's been performing admirably given the situation and his experience. But uh, that, that that is one instance where you know, Wild Card, this core has been playing together now for more than just one split, right? This was the core that was our best amateur team that we had in AoE Ginger Turmeric. I think that some of that experience is really shining for them early in the season as uh, Saligo and Lenza fit into the core of this team really nicely, and it feels like they haven't missed a beat from the success we saw in the last PG. Uh, and I think FlyFam saw a little bit of the inexperience there. Wildcard's taking advantage of it, and it's making this a one-sided series. One-sided for right now, but I still want to give props to FlyFam for hanging in there. For a team that is... At the bottom of the standings, they are making every team they go up against work for it. Mm -hmm. So that it's it's very rare that we just see them get absolutely shut out of a game. Even in this one, there's bright spots. Lunasia is the player that we've been highlighting so far. Is now actually focused here by Moose Hater and Keel. The flash. Ah, uh, they got him here. Ooh, not too bad on the Hexag Ultimatum. Almost trades back Keel. Just barely not enough damage. Had too many tools, though, being thrown. They will get a, a top outer for this, at least, as Lunasia, again, as you stated, made him work for it a little bit. Uh, but no dice on the side of uh, FlyFam. They continue to lose a little bit more than they're gaining. And Wildcard, 12 and 4, Kangas. I, I know, like, this is a team. A lot of these players feel like they were slighted by our challenger squads. And, oh, boy. They've really taken that attitude and, and brought it into the league and played with what we love to see from those uh, provisional teams. Playing their own unique game and really forcing our, our challengers teams and our uh, the provisional teams as well to think differently. And not a lot of teams have been able to do that and beat them. It, they really do feel like the most unique style of team that we have. So not only the fact that they're a provisional team, that they expectations were maybe lower for them coming into the split and they've been absolutely smashing those but it's the fact that they're so fun to watch while they do it too as lens looks for the enchanted crystal arrow dodged out by instinct but you never you're, you're never bored in a wild card series yeah. <laughs> you know there's always something exciting to keep your I eyes mean, on when your top laner's pool is garen zach udir alawi poppy and it's actually, for, like, winning with them. <laughs> makes for very different gameplay. Yeah, and this team's about to be 12-4, and four, but uh, speaking of that top laner, Moose Hater could be in trouble here. Yeah, he's tanky, but there's a lot of people around. Oh, he's going backwards. Ooh, this is looking rough. I think I'm losing here. Cubby might have to take over. Oh, I, I gotta say, uh, we are seeing a wild card. At least Moose Hater was able to sneak out there. But FlyFam, I... That's the play they have to attempt, but it's a little bit too late in the game. I mean, Poppy's gotten a little bit too tanky. And Camille uh, wasn't able to rip through there. Wildcard able to rotate in time is now... You will see one minute before Dragon, each team going to reset. And because of that play on the top side, it does look like FlyFam been able to secure mid-priority and at least try to take control of this bot side river. Now... Moving forward, this is going to be a big fight for Wildcard. And the big fight for me is going to be my only play-by-play play, play fight of the season, hopefully. But I gotta say, Maniac unfortunately falls before the Dragon starts. 30 seconds before, he will not be alive in time to contest this. That is the smite down. And that's no good for the side of FlyFam. They might be looking to go out here with a Whimper. Meanwhile, on the top side, they're not fighting Moose Hater. See if he can take this 1v1 this time around. 
As towers fall, bot control is not in favor of Flyfan, but Minasi is trying to be that beacon of light in the top side. It's now a TP actually comes in. They're sacking this dragon. They want to play for Moose Hater. Moose Hater, he takes down Lunasi in the 1v1, adding a solo kill to his column. Blaze is going to look to answer, but I got to say, this Poppy's damn tank. You can kind of deal with the silos at this point. You have the heal cut. Abscond Duck gets blocked, and now Blaze, he can't even answer the Poppy. This dragon's being taken for free, and Wildcard across the map is able to take the win. Now... Uh, with that said, I do have an update from our co-caster, uh, Kangas, aka referred to earlier in, uh, today. Something else, I'll, I'll let you check Pretty's Twitter in the spirit of following. His computer crashed. Uh, now, fortunately, this game, I think it's a little bit over, folks. Uh, it's gonna be the Cubby solo cast here. Uh, not everyone's dream, uh, but this game might be the dream for Wildcard. As this game, Ocean Soul, it's gonna be so tricky now. Uh, for them to be forced out anywhere. Just able to take trades for free. Have a, a little bit of sustained advantage and a lot of poke from the Malachi Oriana. Fly fam. There's a lot of real estate here on the map. And we just got to see. I think next step for wildcard here, chat. It's going to be take that Baron. Uh, which they don't not do. Uh, I, I think their pace of taking the Baron is going to be okay here. I mean, you have a Bork Senna. Uh, that's definitely not something I'm used to, you know, talking about or seeing. DK knows how to play it with this Ocean Soul 2. They can tank this up four days. So Blaze is at half. There's no TP. There's no hijack available for the Silas wild card. That's enough for them. It's going to be a TP from Nudasia. Is You see the vision toggle. Baron is at half. YFAM trying to get in here, trying to do anything as Blaze is trying to dodge out on the Demonic Embrace poke. But now we got to go on the Senna. DK able to absorb it though. The Maokai all comes out from Keel, splits the fight as wild card running through the squishies. The smite is down. They can reset. The health bars are filled up. And we're back on the Purple Worm, baby, as FlyFam. They're down to Smite, down to member. Moose Hater now taking down the Silas, looking to get another one. As Moose Hater, you cannot move the Poppy at this point of the game. The Root comes through on the Blaze. DK is going to take one. Moose Hater goes forward in the fight, takes down Lunasia. He's been slammed into the wall. It's then just slamming the Baron. Wildcard gets the big Purple Worm buff, but where's the fight on the other side of that? Moose Hater caddies through a minion. He wants Lunasia. He's been polymorphed. He's got Tower Aggro, but he does not give a f ass as Moose Hater. He's pushing through. He's got everything. That Yorl, that's a tanky thing that we've seen on the Rift. Is four tower shots? Who cares? Wildcard. They take the Baron. They're going to take more as they take down this turret. No resets needed when you have Ocean Soul. The pocketbooks are filled up for Wildcard. As they can hit the bank whenever they want to cash this in. But uh, they want to end this game before Elder's up. You got to believe. Is now Maniac knowing that they haven't based. He might actually look on this wave. I don't think it's out all too bad. Gil spots him, but Maniac, he's going, and he's alone. No one else can follow up. Lunasi is out now. Lens rips through the board. Sejuani falls. The inner turret falls in favor of Wildcard as well. As now, I mean, this game, we're going to get a little bit wild. What's the craziest thing that we can see? Oh, Asho from across the map. Why not? See if we follow up with a Shockwave. Nice buffer there from Lunasi to get out. Actually, Malkai will answer. Could it be enough? As, oh, Blaze gets slammed into the wall. He goes down. That's another gray screen. Blaze falls. Wildcard lands. He's shredding through FlyFam is again the Ocean Soul wildcard. They've yet to base. They don't need to fill up the coffers anymore. Can we get X actually from our reserves real quick? Can we just see how much gold we're sitting on here as wildcard? Maybe get, get a gold check. We're going to be blowing up. Blowing these. I think everyone's on 2k plus. Uh, I don't know if our observers are listening to me. They only got Kangas in the air. Ah, here we go. Look at that. Look at how much gold is on the wildcard pockets. They don't need to spend that crap. They're just going to wrap this up. 10k gold leaders. Wildcard looking for another clean 2-0 from them. This team, they play so different on the Rift. But no one, very few teams have been able to stop or answer them. As the Poppy sent a front line. Two games to set it here for DK. He's trying to get more bands thrown out at wildcard. First Nexus turret falls. The Ocean Soul is still kicking in. I'm still talking for whatever reason. This game, done and dusted. Wildcard. Very impressed by their play. As this team, they are not just a provisional team in the league. They are a team that everyone has to deal with. Challenges and all. Three men, shockwave, couple extra kills. Add in the stats as we move into what is now, I gotta say... I believe it's a five-game win streak for Wildcard, who stand victorious. Ladies and gentlemen, they're not going to throw it on my camera as my co-caster is missing. But fortunately, we have Sierra queuing up an interview with the victorious Wildcard. And we'll be back right after this break. 
Hello everyone and welcome back to our Verizon post-match interview. Moose Hater, we got to talk a few weeks ago right at the beginning of the split and Wildcard has been doing amazing <laughs> since then. How has it been going from this team that was kind of underestimated a little bit to now being 12 and 4? Um, well, to be fair, I kind of knew we were like at least top 5, top 6. Um, just because of like how strong our AGT roster was. And then, uh, but being this, coming out of the gate this strong, and I think only like we, what were four losses yeah. now? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty confident that we're gonna be a very, very good team heading into playoffs. Oh, not just a good team, but also just a really fun team to watch. Cause yeah. <laughs> the drafts that Wildcard has been coming up with have been entertaining to watch, but also really seems to be catching a couple of other teams off guard, especially when they're not really respecting you guys. So how has that draft difference really played a role in some of these matches? Um, well, I do think that a lot of teams actually do do their due diligence, but they it's only like it's like kind of halfway there. Um, like, for example, a lot of people banning like not banning Garen four five or uh, now that they're like now they're banning Garen one two three and I just think it's funny because um, generally I don't think Garen is like a good champion to one two three because um, it's kind of weak laner it's a very weak laner and then you know you only like really get to impact the game later on so mm -hmm. but now I think there's such a social pressure on these coaches to ban Garen and not lose to my Garen because if you lose my Garen it's embarrassing. And I think that's hilarious because I'm all for like embarrassing coaches because I know a lot of coaches don't like me as a player because of the things I pick and how I play the game kind of. Um, but um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean this Garen pick, I mean the amount of highlight reels we've gotten to see with it. I don't know if you got to see the on the range episode, but there was a really funny segment in there. I mean, it's gotten a lot of attention, including LCS is talking about you. LEC today yep. was talking about you and this pick. Yeah. How has that been being recognized on this larger scale for this Garen pick? Um, it's it's really nice. It feels good. Um, I never like gotten this much publicity before, kind of. Because uh, before on AGT, when I picked my Garen, I got the quadra kill against C9 um, last Improving Grounds. Um, it kind like it kind of blew up, but not really, not to like this level where like everyone knows that like I'm the Garen person now. And it's funny because uh, Garen is a strong character, and people are finally starting to realize it now that I'm like what like six wins, one loss on it, and like I'm just popping off every single game. Um, I don't know why I took that many games, kind of, but now people are. Finally starting to realize that it's like actually a good character. Um, but yeah, it's it feels good to get recon uh, recognition everywhere. Then now that you've had this success with Garen and you're seeing other players picking it up, I mean, Adam from PBS was playing it today. Mm -hmm. Where would you rank yourself among all these players that are now picking up the Garen in their own competitive play? Would you say that you are <laughs> the Garen player? I would, yeah, I'm definitely the best one. I mean, I watch like some of these people play Garen and like, I'm like, wow, these people have terrible Garen mechanics. I didn't even realize that was a thing. And then like, for example, uh, my teammates can attest to this. I was watching the game where C9, and by the way, Fake God played like the best of all the Garens, but Fake God was proxying the wave. Um, and I was saying that he can't use Stridebreaker on the wave because you have to save your Stridebreaker to proc Phrase Rush. To, to like run away from the jungler when you get inevitably get 1v2'd and like five seconds like not even five seconds later like 10 seconds later he stride breakers the wave and dies for 1v2 gank and i was like laughing so hard because he would have lived if he had a stride breaker up and yeah it's just like little tiny things like that and garen that like make the difference between snowballing and not dying to ganks like that so yeah hey i mean all they have to do is be tuning into one of your games going on to maybe get a couple of those <laughs> hints though Kind of seems yeah. like teams are more banning and not letting you get the Garen anymore. So yep. We'll, yep. Uh, we'll have to see you there. Uh, one last question before I let you go. It is Valentine's Day weekend. A lot of players have been picking other players from their teams or from any other teams to be their Valentine. You had yeah. to pick a player, <laughs> any player in the league. Who would you pick and why? Um, Duo Queen, because my name is Duo Queen. We're matching names, so. 
the dual king and the duo yeah. queen. That's yeah. too good. All right, all right. Well, congrats on the win. Best of luck with the matches going on forward. Thanks for talking Thank to me. You. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, take care. You too. For us, we're going to go back to a quick break before we get started with our final series of the day.